The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Thursday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern time. We got 24 minutes to go until the start of trading. And you got a little bit of volatility to the downside to the upside. Look at this move we had overnight talking about it in the den. Rightfully so. The move begins at about just shy of 3 a.m. Eastern time down to 57.30. We're back to 57.55. We've rolled over a bit since about 8 a.m. this morning. We'll get into some of the economic data in a moment. But we get the S&Ps right now down by 15 points, trading at 57.45. NASDAQ 100. We're negative by 87 points. You see the volatility last night as well, down to about 19,860. And you see, right, since Tuesday, that spike low, that was the low Wednesday, that was the low overnight critical area about 18,500 or so the spike low on Tuesday was excuse me 19,800 or so we were at 19,818 and give or take a little bit above that price point but that's your level in the Nasdaq 100 you get the Dow trading lower as well volatility to the downside we come back and we're giving it up again off 160 points and you get the Russell negative by 12 points crude holding up well in light of what's going on in the Middle East we got crude trading at 7158 you spiked to 72.49 yesterday. You pull back a bit overnight. We got a little bit of volatility, as you see, but we're trading above $71 yet again. Gold contract off $4. You see the volatility there on gold as well. Let's jump around. Excuse me. There we go. Gold trading just off $5, $26.65. We jump to the dollar index, DXY. You talk about strength, man. 102 coming at you. We're at 101.92. Look at that spike. We were so close to 100, 100.17. 100 We've moved for two full dollars in dollar strength. And meanwhile, gold's held up relatively well considering the move that we've had over that time. All right. And forgive me as I'm jumping around. All right, and we get into notes and bonds. Just pulling up the yield as well. Because, yeah, it is quite a move right now. Dollar strength comes with higher yield usually, or the other way around. I should say higher yield usually comes with dollar strength, right? Nonetheless, you got the 10-year approaching 3.82%. We're above where you were on Tuesday. Remarkable the move we've had off of what the Fed did, but we have a lower price, higher yield coming at you. You got the 10 year now approaching 3.82%. You got dollar strength. We've got to jump around to the dollar yen as we kick it off because that's going to be a story we talk about some of the volatility this morning. There's some move for you for some yen weakness adding to the dollar strength. The yen yesterday was trading at 143 and change or so. Yeah, and we're trading at 146.68. We talked about this one earlier in the week, right? Boy, quite a recoil from a 139 handle in the middle of September. Even when we were talking about September 30th, you were at 141. You're at 146 right now on yen weaknesses. It seems like they might not be ready to hike just yet. Uh, in no rush. All right. And we jump over to that crew contract one more time because it is interesting, of course. In light of what we, go on, in light of what we got going on, seems like $70 is the floor right now, that or thereabouts. We make it to 6527 early September. You were as low as 6633 Monday. And we're trading at 7164. All right, oil gains as middies risk rises. I was going to say ramps up. I saw that somewhere this morning as well. But yeah, the story writes itself pretty much, folks. It's on the front page of basically every single one, right? You pull up the front page of Bloomberg, Israel hits Beirut as world awaits its response against Iran, and it's going to be a response. Okay? It's happening. 
You get over to the Wall Street Journal. Well, besides the, the article they have over here talking about Elon giving money, not surprising, right? I was talking about this earlier. Surprised more billionaires don't go out and do things like Elon buying the biggest bully pulpit in the world, X. Um, he was donating money, not surprising, to, to conservative causes well before known in the journal. But what else is out there? Yeah, talking about Iran, and it is interesting, the journal. I was reading this one earlier this morning. Iran exposed to Israeli counterattack after blows against its allies, and you see how all this is coming together, right? There's a reason why Iran backs Hezbollah, because they back Iran in the same way. Well, Hezbollah, they've had their knees chopped off a bit, and Iran a little bit more open than usual. Nonetheless, though, tensions ratcheting up. Yeah, look at these missiles, man. Is that a picture from Tuesday? Man, look at that missile, if that's what it is. Talk about selfies. Look at this guy taking this selfie, right? Iran unleashed one of the biggest ballistic missile barrages in the history of warfare on Tuesday against Israel. Man, those are the missiles, and that's a current picture, and I'm probably, I'm sure it's close. Pretty remarkable, the size they're talking about there. Okay, where do we begin things? Let's talk about the yen, because we talked about it. The yen extends the fall and so i went over this earlier in the week right but when the yen rises over there you're weakening and when they refer to the fall here they're talking about weakening so when you're talking about when we look at the chart of the dollar yen we're looking at the chart of basically the dollar versus the yen is the way to put it that's how you could emphasize it you could say what are we looking at when we look at a chart of the dollar yen we're looking at a chart of the dollar priced in yen right and that's why it's rising Versus the yen, when you look at yen pairs, where yen is the first one, let's see if we flip it around. I think we do. Everyone usually refers. Yeah, it doesn't go the other way, which is interesting, right? Because some of them go the other way. But nonetheless, the yen is weakening. And yeah, the economy is not ready for another rate increase. Okay? And yeah, you got both out here. In terms of you have the prime minister, jolted foreign exchange markets the day before. Okay? And then you have... Let me get it right. I'm confusing these two gentlemen, which is why I'm pausing for a moment here. But you got the two of them, okay? You have two cautious remarks from the Bank of Japan governor and from the prime minister, okay? You have Ueda. Ueda I'm going to have to get these guys' pronunciations because we're going to be talking about them. Uh, Bank of Japan governor, listen, they're both cautious. They're both very, very afraid, for lack of a better term, to hike right now. Denying an additional rate hike was too straightforward and may be part of a strategy to soften um, the Ashiba shock. The yen's plunge was accompanied by a sell-off in treasuries in the wake of a stronger-than-expected jobs market. Yeah, we'll jump over to that jobs number in a moment as well. And why not? We'll kick it off. All right, we take a look at jobless claims as we come into the first break here. First time claims, 225,000, up 6,000 from the previously total and higher than the 220 the market was looking for. Continuing claims, though, under what they were expecting, 1.826. And that's probably the biggest driver of what could really cause a wrench into this because initial claims is not the big deal. It's how many people are remaining on claims. We're actually under what they were looking for there. All right. You jump over to NVIDIA, though. How about it? NVIDIA, back above 120, trend at 121.20. We'll talk a little NVIDIA. We'll talk some tech stocks. Market's in the red. Stay tuned, folks. We're coming back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors.
In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This portion of the Morning Market Kickoff is brought to you by Direction's Daily Leveraged and Inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Welcome back, folks. We check back in on the markets right now. You got the S&Ps negative by 16, NASDAQ slightly in the red by 96, Dow and the Russell as well. And yeah, we got some companies with earnings this morning. We got Constellation Brands, beer, wine, and cannabis. Quite a combo. This thing, great company, man. Modelo, Kim Crawford, Estancia, Corona. Don't forget that one. Uh, you take a look at the longer term chart of this thing. Look at the run up that this thing has from 2010. You make a high, though, of 236 in 2018. You drive down to almost 100 bucks in COVID. It's been quite a little, a little trend to the upside there. You know? Yeah. Topping out at a high of 274 back in earlier the year. You're 255. You're going to trade a little bit lower on their numbers this morning. You spiked to 263 on a beat. Excuse me. And we're backing off a bit. They reiterate their full year earnings per share. Excuse me. They beat earnings. I'll pull up what I was looking at. They beat. And they come in at 432 a share. Here's the earnings just pulling up from Thinkorswim. So for its fiscal quarter, which ended in August, the seller of Modelo Especial and Corona is how they put it. I'm going to pull up these brands in a second. I don't have any constellation. I'm always looking at it, though. They got a number of great brands. And then you have a little bit of a kicker of cannabis on the back end that you have some exposure to. They make 432 a share. The market was looking for 408. They 
missed slightly on sales, though. $2.92 billion versus $2.95. Not a bad take for 90 days. And they reiterated their financial outlook that they provided in September. Adjusted earnings, 1360 to 1380. And its enterprise net sales growth between 4 to 6 percent. The market was looking for 1361. So it basically spans what they were looking for. Now, look at these brands. And I'm not even pumping this thing up, but it is remarkable if you've never looked at it before. Uh, Modelo. It's, is Modelo the best-selling beer in the country now? What is? I think it's pretty close, isn't it? What overtook it? Oh, no. It's Michelob Ultra. Is that it? No, Modelo. Yeah, I knew it was. Modelo over Bud Light. Best-selling beer in the U.S. Its sales are up 12%. Look at this thing. And that's just cherry-picking a quick Google search. But I thought I had remembered it. On National Beer Day 2024, the U.S. is drinking more Modelo than Bud Light. Yeah. So they're selling a lot of Modelo. That's probably why they have it front and center on their, on their website, right? you got Corona out there as well. But check out some of these brands real quick. All right, there's their Modelo. There's their Corona. What else they got in beers? Is that it in their beers? All right, is it the wine that I really... Kim Crawford. Ah, oh, Miomi is a big one as well. If you drink wine, folks, these are big. Look, at they got three pages of wines. Robert Mondavi. Oh, good old Cooks. You can't go wrong without Cook Champagne. <laughs> and what else they got? Not familiar with sea smoke. Let's see their spirits. Ah, Svedka Vodka. That's a good one, yeah. High West Distillery. Micampo. Ah, good old tequila. Casa Noble tequila. Uh, nonetheless, they're trading a little bit lower today. But Modelo, yeah, overtaking Bud Light. And you're backing off by about $5. But pretty remarkable they overtake there. Some decent numbers, almost $3 billion. You slightly miss on revenue. You beat on profit, but they back off a bit. Who would have thought Modelo would overtake Bud Light for the biggest beer in America, right? And Bud Light's not even owned by an American company anymore either, so it is pretty remarkable how that goes. And then you have Modelo, owned by an American company, Constellation Brands. All right, let's jump around and see what else we have going on for stocks that are moving. Give me one second as I pull it up right now. And yeah, so I talked about NVIDIA real briefly. You had Jensen Wang, the CEO. He was on CNBC last night. And listen, I like NVIDIA in the long term, okay? But sometimes it is surprising when he says a few things that should be common sense in terms of what's going on. And what he was talking about was his verbiage was the word insane, talking about that demand for the Blackwell chips are quote-unquote insane. And that shouldn't be surprising, though, folks. That shouldn't be surprising at all in terms of what he's putting out there. No, I was just trying to find that in the video one more. I thought I had it pulled up on a couple of locations. But nonetheless, yeah, he's saying everybody wants the best. Everybody wants all of them. They want it now. Um, no real fundamental update, even though you're getting a pop to the tune of $3 in the pre-market to 121.18. That chip's not even out yet. But, of course, everybody's want the forefront. This is the cutting edge of technology. That's kind of why it's kind of interesting, the whole China deal. You can't be second, right? These computers are going to be so fast that you can't have old chips. you got to have the forefront to be on the cutting edge of technology, and it would make sense. NASDAQ 100 pulling back a bit, 19,923. And, yeah, you're a solid 1,000 points off the high that we made back in July, whereas the S&Ps were just sitting nearly about 85 points off that high that we made just last week of 53.80. We check back in on gold. As I mentioned, gold held up, holding up rel relatively well, right? We're basically sitting at all-time highs at a time when we've had the dollar with a nice little pop there. Occasionally, you'd see gold rip lower when you get a weekly bar where you're trading from 100 to 101.86, but we see, we'll see how we go from there. And you check out the 10-year, and all things considered, no huge move, but yeah, a little bit of a pullback from that critical area. And you see where we are, right? That critical area of about 115.25 or so. You got up to that level just a few days ago, and we traded lower. And that's an important area as well.
All right, let's jump through and see what we got going on here. Yeah, we can talk a little Starbucks. We talked a little. Oh, let's talk a little bit of Levi's. Come on, load for me. Is Levi's? Yeah, they're out with theirs, and they are trading lower, man. Trims the guidance as it weighs the sale of Docker's business is out there. What happened to everybody wearing jeans, man? There's your action. Down from 21 to 1872, and you see what it looks like longer term. Last earnings, they did it too, right? Last earnings, you gap away from 23. You don't quite close that gap, but you trade all the way from 16 bucks up to 22, and boom, you're going to open right back at basically the lows of where they were last earnings. Remarkable. 1893 was where they were last earnings. You're going to open at 1880 for Levi's. And yeah, mixed quarter results is how they put it. Strong gains in its namesake brand and beyond yoga, but sales of Dockers down 15%. Pretty close on the earnings and the revenue front. We'll talk a little bit more about this when we get back. We'll take a look at some of the Magnificent Seven. We'll take a look at Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Tesla. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back with the opening bell. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels. You'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns. You'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry October 11th and 25th for more live trading action. Your purchase goes towards two sessions, so make sure to sign up now so you don't miss a chance to sit next to Larry as he trades the market live. For all information and to reserve your spot today, go to the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archive live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee, so what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. back folks we got markets open you're looking at markets barely in the red s p's off by three we jump around to some of the magnificent seven amazon shares 
trading a little bit lower this morning. Down by about 1.5%. Just checking down some of the different headlines out there. You got Morgan Stanley reiterating an overweight, putting putting it at 210 there. How about 250,000 workers coming for the 2024 holiday season, man? It is remarkable the undertaking some of these companies go through. They're going to hire a quarter million workers. It's October 3rd. They're going to hire them all. And then, unfortunately, the holiday season is going to pass, and that's going to be the end. But this is the same number they did last year. Remarkable. Anticipated increase in demand and the volume. They need less workers. Do you know why? Productivity. Maybe a little AI. Maybe those uh, robots running around the Amazon warehouses are doing a better job. I, I, I do not kid. But look at Amazon, man. Dropping right now. As Amazon's down almost 2%, NASDAQ 100 is only off by about half a percent. You jump over to Apple shares, down about 7 tenths. Microsoft is flat this morning. I mean, what an investment they made into OpenAI, right? We could spend a whole show on that. What are, what's the now the valuation at? $157 billion or something like that? Didn't they sink $10 billion in to be a 50% partner? Not that long ago. And $157 billion is double what it was nine months ago for OpenAI. So Microsoft, green today, up by about a tenth of a percent. We jump over to Tesla shares. Tesla down about eight tenths percent. We check in on NVIDIA, still up by about 1.8 percent, trading at 121. We check in on some of the streamers. Netflix shares down about eight tenths percent. We check back in on some of the movers this morning. You got Levi's down 11 percent. We're gonna finish talking about Levi's and Dockers. And then you jump over to Constellation with their numbers down about 2% as well, down to 250. But yeah, back to Levi for a moment. So Levi's down almost 9.5%. You're at 1904, as I mentioned, kind of right where you were 90 days ago when they came out with their numbers as well. And yeah, you take a look at Levi's. So Dockers, and it is interesting, right? Dockers. Listen, I'm an 80s baby. I grew up in the 90s and the 80s. And uh, Dockers were everywhere. And it's remarkable that they started that brand in 1986 seems like you know when you grow up i was six years old so the world existed at that point they just created the dockers brand it seems like that's as as prominent as levi it's not even close right but it is remarkable they create that brand in 1986 to give themselves an alternative to what they're selling denim yeah here are some khakis throughout the 90s and 2000s khakis were a mainstay but guess what they've fallen out of fashion folks the efforts yeah so they got too much overlap with the Levi brand. Man, so Dockers were down 15% to 90, excuse me, 73 million. And then they have Beyond Yoga, which they acquired in 2001, going up 20% to 32.2 million. Doesn't take long to those for those numbers to converge. If you have a number at 73 going down 15%, you got a number at 32 going up 20%. Those numbers are going to be equal. It is remarkable. You got a company like Beyond Yoga. I'm sure they got good stuff. I'm not familiar with it. That's selling as many products as Dockers, and they're half the amount right now. Okay, but Dockers is everywhere, man. Dockers is is. I think that if you ask people in America if they're aware of the Dockers brand, how many people are going to be aware of the Dockers brand? Almost as many as Levi. I would say it's so prominent. And meanwhile, no one's buying them though. So what are they going to do? They're going to sell off that company. Yeah. Over the last couple of years, the brand has underperformed. We felt this was the right decision for the long term. Yeah, our view financially is the exit of Dockers will improve the company's overall margins and minimize volatility in the top line. I like this plan. I do, because, yeah, hey, the numbers don't lie, right? I would say the numbers don't lie. Looking into schools for Tommy, stuff like that. Looking into test grades. There's so much more that goes into schooling than just test grades. But the numbers don't lie to a certain degree, okay? And they've got a problem with Dockers. They're going to get rid of it. And look, we're getting a pop at the open. I would agree. I like this plan. Look at that pop. Yeah, ditch Dockers, get paid for it, focus on Levi, and check out the numbers they have actually on the actual jeans that they're selling. Okay? During the quarter, the gross margins rose by almost 5%. 4.4 was the number there. Levi's direct channel, they're trying to sell directly, right? Okay? Was up about 10% driven by strength in the U.S., 16% growth in e-commerce. These are great numbers, man. Direct sales are 44% of total revenue, and they're going to bring that number to 55. This one has been amazing me for years. I'm amazed 
that people buy jeans almost 50% direct from Levi versus buying it somewhere like a Macy's or a department store. If I'm going to buy jeans, I'm going to a Macy's still. I am. But that's not the case. And that's going to keep going because once they get the type of technology that can do a little quick, you take your phone, right? It takes your measurements by video, 3D video, takes the measurements, send them in, sends them into the company. They get the data. They make you custom. I mean, that's all going to be coming down the line, man. Yeah. They got a bunch of marketing campaigns. They've been teaming up with Beyonce. But 44% is where they're at. They're going to 55%. And they get a lot of data when they do that, too. The strategy is a boon to profits. Okay. The margins are higher. And it also allows brands to get closer to their customers through data collection. We are going to be past the days of guys buying jeans with just two measurements. Think about how different everyone's bodies are, right? It's happening, folks, all right? The CEO of Levi, he's talked about it years back. The technology is probably arriving. It is going to change how we buy jeans, okay? And it's going to take a few years, but that direct-to-consumer number of almost 50%, the fact that they're going to be able to size things a little bit easier, it's going to happen. And, yeah, they're probably going to ditch Dockers. And it makes sense when you just look at those numbers, man. And you think about the trends, right? I love jeans. Jeans are never going away, man. Surprising that Dockers are not there, but guess what? You know what people are wearing instead of Dockers now? Athleisure. Okay? And we all know how many athleisure brands are out there, whether you're talking about startups, social media, yoga brands, Lululemon, the likes of, right? Yeah, so long, Dockers. But I thought it was remarkable. It started that company in 1986. For me, coming to be where I was 12 years old in like 1992, Right, started middle school in 92, started high school in 94. They were everywhere. Not so much the case anymore. Yeah. Surprised the market's down that much because that's a good plan. Usually the market likes selling off your bad assets, focusing on your good assets. We'll see what they get for that bad asset. It is quite an asset, Dockers. But surprised that they're only selling $72 million a quarter when you look at a company like Beyond Yoga that's pushing almost $35 million a quarter. So Amazon claws back some of that. Not sure what that acceleration was on the open there. We got all the way down to 180.88, and boom, just like that, we're back two dollars higher to where we opened at Amazon. Down about one percent for the session. These markets are popping right now in the tech stocks. Meanwhile, you get the Dow trading a little bit lower. Dow off 225. You get the Nasdaq 100 only off by about 30 run right now. Check in, see what we're doing. Nvidia's helping out the cause, up by 2.2 percent for sure. We're checking on Constellation, down about one and a quarter percent right now on their numbers. And let's check in on gold. Gold flat at 26.69. We take a look at the dollar index. Dollar pushing 102, but not there just yet. 101.87. Stay tuned, folks. We'll come back. We'll take a look at that yen again. We'll talk some other equities. Don't go away. Be right back. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk. So why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, 
He has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening Call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. S&P is negative by 13 right now, and yeah, so... We have jobless claims today pretty much in line, but we get the main event tomorrow morning, 8.30 a.m. We get the jobs report for the month of September. The number they're looking for, just north of about 140,000. This one's out from CNN. Interesting, though, because it's talking about, so we're going to get the September jobs are what we get right now, the jobs report, okay? Usually get it in the first Friday following the month. Sometimes that stretches a bit if that Friday is the first of the month. Excuse me. But nonetheless, that's what we get out Friday morning. The numbers that they're looking for are about 140,000. Okay. Economists project. Let me zoom it in to blow this up a little bit. Why not? There it is. Economists project 140,000 jobs in September. The unemployment rate at about 4.2%. For some context here on previous months, though, okay, you had July was a surprisingly low 114,000 total, revised to 89,000, right? Then you had the annual revision that showed basically there was huge overestimation of what those numbers were prior. And then the August report came in at 142, okay? So you have a weaker than expected July report of 114,000, revised down to 89. August comes in at 142. We have September expected to come in at 140,000, but what's so intriguing is, right? So let's say we come in near somewhere near 140,000 tomorrow morning at 8:30. What's interesting is what happens for the October number, okay? And that's where you're going to get huge distortions from Hurricane Helene, which is obviously impacting us still, okay? And it's going to have a huge impact. For the months going forward you have the boeing machinist strike that's going to be in there as well as the port strike which they were talking about a little bit in the den today had a little bit of fun yesterday going over the history i was talking to my mom yesterday about the guy running that um the port union and yeah it is interesting but nonetheless you look at where we are you look at where we're going we got those three things and that is ahead of we got november 1st and that is where. So that's going to be the first Friday. Sometimes it does fall. There it is. Yeah. So we get November 1st. We get the jobs report for October. And then just what? One, two, three, four days later, we have the presidential election. Man, remarkable. But those numbers are going to be heavily distorted. Okay. And they're probably going to be distorted going forward from there. And those are the numbers that the Fed is going to use to help guide them. So you're going to have distortions in the data. We're going to have something for everybody. It's going to be pretty interesting when you get a little bit of volatility in those numbers, right? But what happens? You get volatility in those numbers, and it makes it harder for to to def 
to, to find the defining path in the data because there might be some transitory impacts of storms and strikes that are in the employment data. We will find out, right? All right, this one, Atlanta, man. If you're in Atlanta, stay safe out there because, boy, yeah. Haze and chlorine odors from the chemical lab fire that happened on Sunday. It's Thursday. You're five days later. Man, these are the, you know, I, I have the phrase, truth always lies somewhere in between, right? And that's where regulations come up. Regulations can be overbearing and they can be unnecessary. Or they can be necessary and they can be too light. You read stories like this, keep in mind why regulations are occasionally a good thing, folks. Okay? You got biolab facilities going on fire and you have chlorine clouds basically soaking up an entire city. Yeah. So you got weather models predicting a wind shift. High likelihood that people across Metro Atlanta are going to wake up this morning seeing haze and smelling chlorine. So stay safe out there. Might be time to wear a mask for today if you're walking around Atlanta, man. You got clouds of chlorine and haze out in front of you. Whew. Pretty remarkable. All right, we talked Iran. Where are we going to? Yeah, how about this one from Goldman? They're talking about big numbers to start at the end of the year. So, Goldman, they're talking about, guess what? The price target of 6000 might be too low. Yeah. You have um, Scott Rubner is what he's talking about. And he's saying his year-end rally for 6000 is too low. And he expects that rally to start at the end of this month. There's a couple factors that go into that, okay? First... You have seasonal factors in which data going back to 1928, S&P tends to rally 4% from about October 27th through the end of the year, okay? On top of that, you have a U.S. presidential election. As investors rotate out of cash and into equities after the risk volatility around the election fades. And then what you also have in here, okay, is that share repurchases. You have a number of factors they talk about but are expected to resume on October 25th when markets exit an earnings-related blackout for their buyouts, and corporate America's, America is expected to emerge as a buyer. So you're going to have buybacks coming back into the market late October, right ahead of the presidential election, but you might face some headwinds for the next few weeks. Yeah. The largest U.S. buyer in U.S. equities in 2024 can purchase 35% less shares during the closed window, is what they're talking about when you talk about buybacks, corporate America, etc. And you look at where we are in terms of historical. This is the seasonality. October 27th is the red line. Yeah. So, November and December, usually good months. You add in the blackout period of the Fed, and then you throw in there the presidential election, which usually you might take a little bit of risk-off approach going into that election. The variables come out. The uncertainty comes out of things, and then you position yourself and put money back at risk. Uh, but nonetheless, not bad when you talk about an S&P that's just been on fire. We're trading at 57.42. You take a look at a longer-term weekly chart, and 6,000 seems too low. Well, that's remarkable, considering a year ago we were trading at 4,000. 50% doesn't seem that bad from the 4,000 low of 2023, and that's not cherry-picking the 3,500 low from the prior year. So Goldman, they're a little bit bullish. Yeah, we talked some yen, talked a little bit of oil. Uh, this one, interesting. We've been talking homeowners insurance. Just a good reminder from the journal. You have homeowners insurance. Is it enough to rebuild your house? Make sure that you're insured well enough to rebuild. Now, this goes completely separate from flood insurance. If you're even thinking about the fact that a flood could hit you, folks, you're near that area, you should probably have flood insurance. All right, a lot of horror stories out there. Of course, the people lived in their houses for 30 years. It only takes one, and unfortunately, things are just going to get worse. But what they talk about here is just making sure you're at the right level of insurance to actually rebuild when costs to rebuild have spiked so dramatically for goods over the last three to four years alone. Okay? Yeah. The cost of construction materials and labor increased by 40% and 16% respectively just over four years from 2019 to 2023. Most people get a little complacent. Now, insurance cop insurance policies usually have a 7 to 10% per year increase that protects people against those inflationary factors. But what's happened is that is not enough of a rise in light of what has happened to some of the costs that have gone in there. 
So yeah, you want to look at this <clears throat> in terms of your replacement cost coverage. Make sure you have a decent idea and give yourself a decent amount because there's no point in having insurance if you're not insured to the proper level, folks. And I think it's, you know, in light of what's happened, the people get hit. We're seeing it everywhere here. Um, take a look at that. Make sure you're at the right number and if not, jack it up because it's not a lot of money to go up to probably what you need to be in the, in the chance that it happens. One more segment, folks. Stay tuned. We'll come back. Stay tuned. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN educating investors don't forget you can listen to tfnn live on your mobile device 24 hours per day go to tfnn.com and hit watch tiger tv that's tfnn.com then hit watch tiger tv Welcome back, folks. You got the NASDAQ 100. It's trying. We're negative by less than one point right now. Look at this acceleration we got going on, man. We're up more than 100 points from that low of 19,900 on the open, and we're just negative by single digits right now at 20,000 on the dot. The S&Ps roll over a bit on the open. We're negative by 18 points off three-tenths percent. Yeah, the Dow really rolls over 42,159. Let's see. What do we got? We got everything in the Dow Red. Home Depot's off a percentage point. Look at this, man. Goldman Sachs is off. That's going to hurt when the $500 stock is off with a percentage point. Look at the banks. Goldman Sachs, J.P. Morgan, American Express. Man. Jump over the NASDAQ 100. Look at NVIDIA, man. Now, be careful. I love NVIDIA long term, but... Surprising that it's trading like that today just on the CEO talking about that the demand has been insane for their 
newest chips. That's the whole reason it's one of the most expensive companies out there, but you got the chips staring high. Look at AMD's up 2.6, Broadcom's up by a percent, ARM Holdings up as well, but NVIDIA powering it higher, man. NVIDIA up $4.32. We're trading at 123, and you're up by 3.7%. How about it? Let's check in on Tesla shares as they got another recall. Tesla down about two tenths percent, down with the market right now. And you jump over to Tesla. I've been talking about being careful of this equity, folks. Uh, you know, these cyber trucks, they look pretty cool, pretty cool. If you got a hundred grand you don't really care about, you want to buy a toy, I would buy one. If it's gonna be your vehicle of choice, I would not. They're recalling more than twenty seven thousand of those cyber trucks. I think that's all of them. A delayed rear view camera images that could impair driver visibility and increase crash risks. It just keeps happening, man. They only pumped this car out less than a year ago. Okay. And yeah, you're talking about that the recall they had to issue a recall in April to fix a loose accelerator pedal, right? And another one in June over windshield wipers and trim, and now they got one over the camera, nonetheless. Tesla catches a bit on the open, though, at 249. We got tech stocks trading higher, driven by NVIDIA shares. Folks, stay tuned. We got Basil coming up. He did his show at 8 a.m. We got Steve Rhodes after that, Fast Market after that. Stay tuned, folks. I'll be right back for the 10 o'clock update. Have a great Thursday, everybody. The stock market is a delicate interconnection.